So since the recording is there, yeah, now it says, yeah, yeah, it's getting recorded. So we will continue and we will try to uh, finish up another three classes, this particular chapter, which I am going to do or doing. So this was a reflection of life. So these are these three classes I want to cover on this chapter at least, so that we are at least done at least with a few chapters before your uh, first term of half year. So today's chapter, as all of you know, uh, we are talking about refraction of light. So what is the definition of refraction of light? Or what is refraction of light? In simple words, so refraction of light means bending of a ray of light. When light passes from one optical medium to another. So if anyone says, what is refraction of light? You should remember, refraction of light is a bending of ray of light when light passes from one optical medium to another. Now, what is optical medium means? For example, I'll just tell you a simple way to understand. Suppose if I take a glass slab. Glass slab, any thick block of glass. You'll find that the light travels here. And then there is some bending. But after bending, again, it emerges, which is in parallel to this. So the bending of ray of light, when light enters from one medium to another. In this case, the first medium is air. The second medium is glass. So from air to glass, where it is going, there is some bending. So that bending of ray of light is called refraction of light. Keep this in mind. So that is called refraction of light. Now, along with refraction of light, there is something called laws of Refraction of light. This is what. Just this one. Before I tell you the laws of refraction of light, there are a few uh, effects or let's say few examples to depict that refraction of light actually takes place. Suppose you've got a glass tumbler you take, you fill it up with water, not to the brim, you fill it up, uh, let's say, uh, three fourth or let's say uh, two third of the glass with water. Take a pencil and you put the pencil inside. When you put the pencil inside, you'll see the pencil appears to be bent. When you put it, the pencil, this particular pencil, which is supposed to go straight or look straight, it looks a little crooked or it looks a little, little bent. So that bending is all because of refraction of light. If you have a fish in an aquarium, especially those round bottom aquarium, if you have seen, if you have got a round bottom aquarium and if you have got a fish, a fish which is small size actually appears to be very big if you look from outside. That again is due to refraction of light. You look at a, a swimming pool or a, a bucket that's filled with water. The bottom of the bucket or the swimming pool always appears shallower than it is. And the cause of it is the refraction of light. So everything, whether there's a bending or it appears to be less shallower than the others, and all kinds of things ultimately is due to refraction of light. And what actually is refraction of light? It is nothing but the bending of ray of light when light passes from one optical medium to another optical medium. Now, before I tell you anything, I want to tell you about the laws of refraction of light. If you have checked this year's question paper, this particular question has come. So, the why it blacked out. So there is every possibility that uh, this kind of question or this type of questions may be asked for your badge also. Why? Direct questions will be uh, will be yeah direct questions will be coming for your exams. Okay, so these are direct questions. There are every possibility that this your direct questions may be asked in the exam. And something which you should know. Let's say uh, to understand this, let's do one. Uh, let me tell you just one thing, which practical, uh, which actually you will be doing when you, uh, in the later part, if you ever do, I don't know, this year the situation improves, I'm sure, you will do the practical for this. Now, for this, what you do, you need a piece of paper. In the piece of paper, you need to put a glass slab. And what is a glass slab? The glass slab is, I told you, it's a thick block of glass. The thick block of glass, cuboid shape. So if you look at it, it will be like this. It's all made up of glass. This is a glass cap. 
If you take this glass slab and you put two pins here, and you start observing the pin, when the pin appears to be in a straight line, you put two another pin and then draw it. And this one you just enjoy. This is the practical basically which you will be doing. But here we are not talking about the practical, so I'm not talking tell anything about how the practical is done. Because to do the practical theoretically is somewhat impossible to understand. When you actually do, you will feel better about it. So let me just tell you the practical part of it. I'm not telling the practical part of it, but I'll tell you the reflection part of it. So let's talk about a glass slab. And in this glass slab, let's say the first part, I'll just take this part is glass. So this plus is glass and this plus is air. So let's put a ray of light which enters from air to glass. It bends. Right. So just to understand, we put a normal. Normal is 90, right? At the point of incidence. So this line will be termed as your incident ray. This part will be your refracted, check the spelling, okay? Refracted ray, and this is going to be your normal. So, once again, the incident ray, this is a refracted ray, and this is a normal. All of the three, they're lying on the same plane. What does same plane mean? If you take a plane, means let's say this is a boat. If you do the practical in the boat, it will lie on the same boat. If you take a paper, it will lie on the paper. So, then the first rule says, the first rule says, the incident ray, the normal, and the refracted ray at the point of incidence. This is the point of incidence. All lie in the same plane. It is exactly the same as that of reflection of light. If you remember the reflection of light, the second law, and this one's first law, they're exactly the same. So this is the first law. And what about the second law? So the first law says incident ray comma normal and refracted ray at the point of incidence. You remember this at the point of incidence lie on the same plane. On the same plane. Remember this. And what about the refracted ray? What is the refracted ray? <clears throat> no, means what about the second law? So this angle, this angle is the angle of incidence, this angle is the angle of refraction. So what about the second law? The second law says the sine of angle of incidence, or the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction. This is not reflection, check the spelling, refraction is a constant. And that constant is known as refractive index of the medium. This constant also has a name and that name is refractive index of the medium. So once again, I'm telling you, how do you understand the second law? See, when it is written, sin i by sin i. In sine ratio, we use the term ratio. The ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction, the ratio, okay? Once again, the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is a constant for a given pair of media. What can be the media? It can be air and glass in this case. It can be water and glass. It can be air and water, whatever. For a given pair of media. Means pair means there should be two media, at least is a constant for a given pair of media, and that constant is known as a refractive index of the media. Give this in mind. So that constant is nothing but what? The refractive index of the media. Give this in mind. So this question tends to be or happens to be one of the most important questions. Remember this. But it may not come, say, the laws of refraction of light. It might also come for you all as a Snell's law. So if the question comes, state Snell's law. The Snell's law is the second law. The second one is known as Snell's law. Remember this. 
Okay, the second law is known as Snell's law. Give this one. Right, so Snell's law is your second law. Clear? So these are two laws. The second, if the in the exam they ask you to state Snell's law, then you just write down the second law. You don't have to write anything in the first. But if they say laws of refraction of light, you have to write down both. Now, if you look at the drawing or this particular drawing. You see, there is one shift. There is one lateral shift. Right? So, what is this lateral shift? I'll just show you. So, we we'll join it here. This is the way it stops. And then it moves up. Right? So, then it moves up. Okay? This is your normal. This one, this can be another normal. Right? So this is your normal and that also is your normal. Hmm. So, suppose if I can produce this. I'll draw it. I'll redraw it. Okay, so to understand this, what is lateral shift? So what is lateral shift? Let's take, and there's a glass lab. So this is the incident ray. This is the refracted ray. And this is the emergent ray, right? Okay, this is your normal let us right? That was my normal. Now this ray can be produced straight. So this distance, this perpendicular shift, see this, there's a distance between the line, how much it should have come, and actually where it has come. So that perpendicular shift, perpendicular shift, in the path of incident ray. This is the incident ray. So that part, perpendicular shift in the path of incident ray is called lateral shift. So once again, I'm repeating, is the perpendicular shift in the path of incident ray, which is emerging out of a glass lamp. It's coming out of a glass lamp. So that, because this one is about to come out of a glass lamp, so that perpendicular shift from, or let's say, the, from the path of the incident ray is known as lateral shift. If you have checked this year's question paper, this particular question has come. It's probably, again, a very important question. Please write down, children, in your copy, this particular question also. What is lateral, sorry, uh, lateral shift uh, means lateral displacement. And the book is given as displacement. So you remember it as lateral displacement. Okay, not in the right as lateral shift, but it's sometimes say it's called as lateral shift also. But since in your textbook they say lateral displacement, we will be using lateral displacement. So if the question comes, what is lateral displacement? You will write the answer like this. The perpendicular shift, if you want, you can write or you can see from the textbook I'm writing. The perpendicular shift in the path of incident rate the perpendicular shift in the path of incident ray while emerging out of a rectangular glass slab. While emerging out of a rectangular glass slab is called lateral displacement. It's called lateral displacement. And this question has come in 2011. So in 2011, this particular question has actually So we got that. Okay. There is another point which we have to do. That's the refractive index. So before I tell you this, I don't tell you this. What is refraction? I told you. But what is the cause of refraction? That I didn't. 
So I told you what is refraction. I told you the laws of refraction. I also told you lateral displacement right now. But I did not tell you what is the cause of refraction. Now this cause of refraction also has been asked once. In your book, if you read, it's very complicated the way they have given. But I'll give you a very simple two lines answer. If you write this, I don't know what you're saying. Two lines answer, but then if you write this in some exams, means in the metric exam, surely it's correct. So what is the answer to it? Is that just a simple one? And if you follow the textbook, it becomes a little complicated than this. But I'll tell you a simple reason for it. See, what is the cause of refraction? This is air. And this is glass. In air, the speed of light is almost this much kilometer, three lakh kilometer it goes per second. Okay, this is three into ten to the power eight, three into ten to the power eight meter per second per second. Whereas in glass, what happens to the speed in glass? The speed becomes whereas in glass the speed becomes one lakh eighty thousand kilometers per second. One lakh eighty thousand means one point eight into ten to the power eight meter per second. See, the drastically the speed has been reduced. Three lakh is one lakh eighty means almost half. Now, what happens when it becomes half? Just take an example. I'll just tell this story. Let's say one person is on the other side of the bank. Let's say there's a river or muddy river. I put it. It's a muddy river. There is one church, temple, whatever you say, is there in the opposite side of the river, and one person on a Sunday has to go. So he has got two ways of doing it. One, he goes straight, crosses the river like this. Or second thing is that he goes straight, crosses the rivers first, and then he walks as fast as possible to reach the church. Which person will be able to reach faster? Once again, I'm repeating. Let's take a simple logic or logical uh, uh, explanation for this. Let's say, let's say there is a muddy river. A river which you can even walk around and you can cross, but then it's full of puddles and muddles. That kind of river is there. Opposite to it, there is a church, and the person has to reach this particular church as soon as possible. Or let's say there is a instant church, now these hospitals are moving to demand. So let's say there is a hospital, and the person has to reach that hospital as soon as possible. So the only way to do it is that if it crosses the river like this, they have to go by this river. There is no bridge. So there are two options to it. One is to go straight, and second is to cross the river as fast as possible, in shortest way to cross it, and then walk as fast as possible to reach the hospital. Which person or which category or which method way the person takes will make him reach the hospital faster? The first one, no. The second one, yes. Why? Because the moment he reaches in this particular muddy water. The feet will sink, and it will become very, very, very slow for him to come out of it. Whereas he can just take the shortest way to come out of it, and then he can run and also reach the hospital as fast as possible. So, same principle is followed by light. When the light has seen that its speed has become very less in the glass, so it finds tries to find the shortest way to come out of it. And the shortest way in this case is if you follow. This one, that is, it deviates or shortest way to come out of it, and hence there is a bending of ray of light, and hence it causes the refraction of light. So keep this in mind, take this into the account. This is the main cause of refraction of light. So if they ask you what is the cause of refraction of light, you can write the answer. Right? I'll dictate. You write the answer. The cause of refraction of light is. Is due to is due to the difference difference due to the difference of speed of light 
difference of speed of light in the two media in the two media okay so is difference of speed of light media in the two media. there is a difference of speed of light in the two medium there is bound to be some amount of refraction of light so this is what is the cause of refraction of light you don't have to write all those hands uh, shoulders moving up down everything nothing to write about that you just have to write the cause of refraction of light is the difference of speed of light in the two medium then if you want you can elaborate you can write speed of light in the a but when it is reduced to one like kilometers per second which is very very less so due to which is find the shortest way to come out of it and hence the refraction of light takes place if you want you can write that also so the main answer should be the cause of light is due to the refraction of light remember the refraction of light in the two can this mean now difference due to the difference of speed of light in the two medium can this mean okay so this is something which you should remember and this can come now there is another question which is always asked particular question pay attention and listen let's take one simple way let's say this is a glass this side is air this side is glass a ray of light and let's say this is a normal so once again this is a incident ray this is your refracted ray so incident ray refracted ray and this is normal right incident ray a refracted ray this is the normal and this is your point of incidence right so the question is out of air and glass which is rarer and which one is denser even the air is rarer glass is denser so if the question is asked this question you can write down also please write it down please write it down is a very 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 important question right the question will be like this what happens to the ray of light what happens to the ray of light when it travels from medium to denser medium so what happens to the ray of light when it travels from rarer medium to denser medium so this is a rarer medium this is a denser medium so what happens to the ray of light it bends towards the normal you look at the bending it is bending towards the normal so your answer is it is bending towards the normal this question has been asked previously many 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 times so the question is asked what happens to the ray of light when it travels from a rarer medium to a denser medium your answer should be the ray of light bends towards the normal give this one. so the bending of ray of light takes place towards the normal okay. so ray of light bends towards the normal yeah i hope is okay i hope you all have understood let's take another one suppose if i change it now same the same question but all of you will copy on this question this question is a damn important from examination point so please copy down this questions now if the same thing i reverse it ray of light goes not from rarer to denser but it goes from denser to rarer is not going any more from rarer to denser but it is going now from denser to rarer then what happens 
in other words it's going like this this is denser this is rarer so it's going from here is going to here. so it's going from denser to rarer so what happens so what happens is the rate of light when it travels from rarer medium to rarer medium instead of that is going from a denser medium to a rarer medium clear then what happens so bending of ray of light takes place is it towards the normal or is it moving away from the normal if you observe the diagram it is moving away from the normal so the ray of light will bend away from the so it will be it will so ray of light this should be answer okay so ray of light in the previously when it goes from rarer medium to denser medium it bends towards the normal but when it going from denser to rarer medium it is bending away from the normal and suppose if in case the incident ray and the normal is same so means if i have a diagram this is the normal and this is also the incident ray then there is no bending there is no bending of ray of light the light passes straight through because in this case the angle of incidence will be zero so angle of refraction also is going to be zero so it passes straight through okay without any bending so these two questions are very very important so write it down please write down these two questions can important okay so this for this first Which I'll be making, uh, or two more classes which I'll be taking. So based on that, which you will be doing, okay? Which uh, I'll try to cover off this particular chapter. Now today is one of the last topic which I'll take for today is a refractive index, and then we'll try to do few numericals based on that. So refractive index already we have defined what is refractive index when you have done Snell's law. Already we have defined what is refractive index, and we have done Snell's law. So once more we will do it. So refractive index. What is refractive index actually? So we can have the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is a constant, which is nothing but refractive. index so well, you can write in words i have written a symbol for it which is the symbol is mu but you can write on as refractive index mu if you want to write you write it u and extend the u little bit off okay so that's mu remember so sin i by sin r is equals to refractive index that's the ratio but is it the only definition or is it the only definition for refractive index If you look by your textbook, there are two definitions given. This is one of the definitions, but second definition is also there. See, I'll give you the formula. Speed of light. It is nothing but the ratio of speed of light in a vacuum. Speed of light in vacuum. Vacuum spelling many times everyone gets confused. You write double, okay? If you look at the spelling, there are double. So speed of light in vacuum. Vacuum means a. Say vacuum is nothing is there. So air and vacuum we take almost the same. Of course, it's not the same, but we take it almost the same. And the speed we know in vacuum and air, which you have to remember always, is three into ten to the power eight meter per second. You cannot forget this. The speed of light in vacuum or air is three into ten to the power eight meter per second. So, speed of light in vacuum or air divided by speed of light in a given medium. Okay, in a given medium, it can be water. Glass, it can be anything. So this is what the definition of a refractive index. 
So second definition. What is the first definition I told you? It is the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of reflection, which is a constant. And what is the second definition I told you? Reflection index is defined as the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in a given medium. Keep this in mind. So once again, this is what is your definition. Clear? Yeah? Including the formula. Just to make you understand. Achha, another thing they may touch you. Thus, refractive index has any unit. Your answer to it should be refractive index has no unit. It has got no unit. Because whatever, if it is meter per second, it has a unit. So, refractive index will have no unit. Okay. So, let's do one few numericals and see what we can do. Mm. Hi, Rob. Okay. Okay. So, let's see. You can see page 51. Page 51. Let's say, let me show you question number one. Page 51, question number one. So, what is page... 51, PP1, and then question number one. What it says, a ray of light strikes a glass slab. Strikes a glass slab for refractive index. Of refractive index, how much will be the refractive index in this case? Of refractive index, let me take this marker. Of refractive index, 1.5 at an angle of 37 degrees. What is the angle of refraction? What is the angle of refraction. So what will be the angle of refraction you need to? Okay, so again they gave you some values. Two values they gave. One is sine of how much? 37 degrees equals to 0 0.6018 and another one they gave sine of 20 is equals to 0 0.4067, something like that. So, the, we have to find out the value of it. Now, what do we know? Refractive index. So, refractive index, what is on? Refractive index is equals to what? Sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction. So, what is the refractive index in this case? It will be 1.5. Sine of angle of incidence is how much? What is the incidence? And sine incidence, okay. Is it incidence? A ray of light at an angle of 37. So this is incidence. So 37. And what do we have to find? We have to find sine of angle of R. Simple. Normally this two equations come the exam, but at least it comes to be interchange. So I'll happen. Sine of 37 divided by 1.5. So what we get here? Sine R will be sine 37. Sine 37 comes out equals to how much? Okay, so 0 0.6018 divided by okay, 1.5. So let's see what we get. Uh, if you divide 0 0.6018 0 0.6018 divided by 1.5. So if you remove it, 6018 divided by 1 and 4 zeros, right? And this is 15 into 10. So 1 to 1 zero cancels. So what I am getting? 0, 6018 by 15123. So 15,000. Yeah. So if you divide, okay, I'll just divide it here. 6, 15,000 and 6018. Okay. So how much will it be? Put a point. There will be one zero. 
right? So how much will be four times six thousand six thousand and zero eight one. So one zero comes. But since there's less, one more zero will be there. Can I put zero one more? So it comes to one, right? So it will come to eighteen thousand because one eight zero it goes on. So fifteen thousand something, right? So three. It goes on. So what you get, you are getting a zero point four zero one. But if you look, it's almost four zero. Four zero almost is similar. So sine r is equals to. We can write it as sine of twenty four. Sine sine candles. So r will be equals to twenty four. I feel this value is not exactly okay. So that should be your answer. So it comes so refractive index comes out equal to almost twenty four. Just copy down this. Okay. And then one more question. PP two. If you see, this question has come this year. PP two question number one. Actually, this question has come this year. You all can take a screenshot if you want. You can take a screenshot and copy it later. Right. So I'll just rub it. Okay, I'm just going to rub it off. I'll show you one more question about PP two. See, one more question we'll do. Uh, this question has come in 2021, huh? so you never know what are important questions are. This PP2 question number one. The velocity of light in air is three into ten to the power eight meter per second, and in glass is two into ten to the power eight meter per second. Find the refractive index of glass. Find the refractive Index of glass. Okay, so find the refractive index of glass. So let's see. velocity of light in air is this much, in glass is this much. Find the refractive index of glass. So this one, which formula to be used? We can use refractive index is what? Speed of light in vacuum. By speed of light, all my markers have stopped working. Speed of light in glass. So, what is the speed of light in vacuum? Is given as three into ten to the power eight. Across two. What you actually getting is three by two. So three by two, if you take it, it will be nothing but one point. So refractive index on this case comes out equal to one point five. So these are some of the numericals, and many of the numericals actually are solved. You are supposed to see the solved ones on previous one, and then try out. Okay, this is one thing. See, almost suppose if PP one is given two sums, one has been already shown. So if you see these, also you'll be able to try that. Okay. So I want a few more such numericals, and uh, we can do it. Okay. So thank you, thank you so much. That's one.